guys, welcome back to DOS Storm. The topic of today is DOSBox. Now if you're a DOS gamer or you've watched my videos before, you likely know what DOSBox is. If you don't, all you really need to know is that DOSBox is an emulator for DOS. And you need an emulator for DOS because DOS games and programs that were made in the 90s and 80s don't run on modern operating systems such as Windows. So what's frustrating to me though is that many of the tutorials for DOSBox here on YouTube are extremely convoluted. You don't really need to type in a whole bunch of commands and look like some kind of, you know, hacker with a hoodie and a green screen typing in Linux stuff on like a hacker commercial that, you know, people are stealing your data and stuff. You don't really need to do that to use DOSBox. So I'm going to show you two ways that you can use DOSBox that might blow your mind even. Maybe. I don't know. Just watch the video. Okay, so number one. If you notice when you install DOSBox, uh, it puts a shortcut on your desktop for DOSBox. And this is really handy because the easiest way to load almost every DOS game with DOSBox is to just take the program you want to load with DOSBox and just drag it into that icon. It'll mount everything for you and you can press Alt Enter and go in full screen and you're pretty much done. This works with pretty much everything except games that use a CD. So setting up a virtual CD-ROM or a physical CD-ROM is actually pretty easy to do in DOSBox. I found the easiest way to set up CD-ROMs in DOSBox is to set it up with the auto exec so it loads every time DOSBox is loaded and you don't really have to worry about typing in a command each time you want to use a CD-ROM. To edit the auto exec for DOSBox is pretty easy. You can just do a quick Windows toolbar search for DOSBox, and there should be an option in there that says DOSBox options, which will open up a text file for you. Now, don't be really intimidated by this. There's a lot of stuff on here, and most of it you probably don't even ever have to mess with. All you really need to do is scroll to the bottom until you see the heading that says auto exec, and then you can enter the following command. So the first part of the command is mount, then a space, and then you want to type in the drive letter that you want to show up in DOSBox. I'm using D, so the drive letter D will show up as the CD-ROM inside of DOSBox. Next, we do another space, and this is the location of your actual CD-ROM or virtual CD-ROM inside of Windows. Mine is I for some asinine reason, so whatever it is, you just need to type in the drive letter, colon, and then backslash. Then we add another space, type in dash, T, another space, and then type the word CD-ROM. Now the last thing you need to do is just save the notepad file, and then every time you load DOSBox, it should mount the CD-ROM and have it available to use for your games. Just keep in mind that if anything changes in Windows, whether your physical CD-ROM drive letter changes, or you switch out with another virtual CD-ROM, you're gonna have to change this again to match what your settings are inside of Windows. So with that stuff out of the way, let's get back to the main portion of the video. So if for some reason you don't want to drag and drop into the DOSBox icon every time, if you find that tedious or something, you can also just duplicate the DOSBox icon. And if you go into properties, you can um, paste the destination for the game you want to run after uh, the DOSBox uh, executable. And if you put that in double quotes and hit apply, you can just use that icon as a shortcut for the game then. You just might, you might want to switch up the icon so you don't get it mixed up with your regular DOSBox icon, but that's an easy way to make a shortcut to the game you want to play. So this brings us to number two. Now, if you want to run DOS games as you do like Nintendo ROMs or something, and you want a program, a separate program to maybe organize your collection, your best bet is to use a DOSBox front end. Now there are a bunch of DOSBox front ends out there and a Google search will find you a whole bunch of them and you can find you know what's best for you. I'm using Amp Shell here and with this really all you have to do is set the right location for the game and it will configure everything for you. And you can organize everything with different icons and categorize your collection by genre, whatever. It really makes it easy, especially if you're not a techie person or want to actually mess around with the program DOSBox itself. Just keep in mind, you still need to install DOSBox. This won't work by itself. So you have to install DOSBox first, then the front end. Well guys, that sums up this video. Whether you've been using DOSBox for a while or you've been looking to get into some DOS games and you weren't really sure how to use DOSBox, 
I hope this video was helpful to you. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. I have a lot of other videos of this type of tutorial type and just me goofing around with DOS and vintage game things. Maybe check out my other video on getting 16-bit programs to run on modern Windows or my other video about running Glide FX games using any graphics card. But that does it for today. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next video, hopefully, if you subscribe, if you like, if you whatever, if you, you know, I'm going to stop now. See you guys.